सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामय सर्वे भद्रा पश्यु मा कच्चि दुख भाग भवे आई वेलकम ऑल व्यूवर्स फॉर दिस स्पेशल एपिसोड फॉर इंडिपेन्डेंस डे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर वेर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट विकसित भारत एम्पावरिंग एकेडेमिक इंस्टिट्यूशन्स टूडे आई एम वेरी मच हैप्पी टू बी इन दी ऑगस्ट प्रेजेंस ऑफ द फैकल्टी ऑन द प्रेनर्स फ्रॉम सरदार पटेल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी to my left i have professor dr rajendra savant we have professor dr vyas rao sir we have professor dr dhananjay kanbalde ji and we have professor dr kiran talele ji joining us today so let me start with the question directly sir can you introduce yourself and what inspired you to become an entrepreneur or an innovator in the field of education we just started in the 2010 where our own alumni mr rahul chari and sami nigam came to india after working 10 years in abroad and they wanted to start a business so the then principal prachi gharpuri she offered a place in our campus where they started their first company and that was a kick starting moment for all of us we started thinking differently in the direction of entrepreneurship we started differently where our engineer students can contribute to the nation building and overall job creation so that journey continued for four years we were observing many startups and then we applied to the government of india for innovation and entrepreneurship development grant in 2010 we got 45 lakh rupees grant developer and in that we created more than 50 entrepreneurial related projects marketable projects out of that three startups created they actually converted into startup business in the span of 5 years so that was a, actually not as entrepreneurship but as the entrepreneur educator and entrepreneur inspired my journey started 50 plus star patents were created three startup created so many examples are there one noticeable example is work india he was the student of innovation and entrepreneurship development center presently running company worth up 500 crores and 850 people are payroll on payroll the company is now shifted to the bangalore so like that there are many more example where student converted their product into the marketable product and enter into this that is what is beginning and then in 2016 we got incubation grant from the dst there we started officially the incubation center and since then we didn't look back we got nidhi triple s 10 crores grant we got nidhi prayas 7 crores grant we got startup india seed fund again 5 crores grant and that is just to support the startup businesses now as on today the students have second options open that they can think of becoming an entrepreneur so initially we thought that giving the space for the newly enter into business is more than enough but we soon realized that that is not sufficient they want financial support so we had multiple options for financial support now we realized that even that is not sufficient we want to create their mindset so finally story comes to the innovation and creating the mindset mind a culture in the entrepreneurship culture in the academic campus so we interviewed the students we asked them what are their problems why you are not coming forward to this so they said that no family pressure the peer pressure because most of the students are getting very good job they don't want to come to the entrepreneurship side so we brought deferred placement policy in deferred placement policy they can take the option of startup incubation they will get financial support they will get the uh, subsidized space in the campus and in case if they find that business is not survivable then they can come back to the institute they can be part of the placement process and they'll continue trust me and this is my personal experience all those who has applied, applied for deferred placement nobody has turned back they are doing their businesses and they are enter into this field my first job was in in the industry uh, i was in jet king electronics uh, there is a nice story about jet king they were uh, sindhis from pakistan they 1947 they came and they started a company in india jet king and they were the first people who made a small transistor it's a popular company but eventually uh, they somehow they could not do well and the, all their factories were closed in 1990 uh, they started uh, skill development center training the uh, 
people uh, are dropout students for employability point of view and those days it was computer as a skills assembling the computers are sort of a thing so i same year i passed out and uh, casually applied and i was appointed so our job was uh, we were the only two people in the entire jet king family because all the factories are closed and that was skill development in robotics fiber optics and computer assembly so that's how i understood and learned about the significance of the skill development how people got employed because even if you have a few skills about the simple assembling the computer troubleshooting the computers people are getting the employability those in the art science college students we are not employing the we are not training the engineers actually we are training the graduate students and they were getting employability so that was how uh, in the seed uh, as a seed itself as a faculty i was a trainer and eventually i shifted to education because i wanted to go for higher studies and then i entered into teaching but believe me uh, right from the day one i was in kopargaon all 8 years after 5 o'clock i used to teach the students about computer assembly all these things even in a village place students used to stay there and up to 9 o'clock and get it trained like certification programs and i shifted to mumbai though we were initially in spc and aided wing uh, means self financed courses but we developed the culture right professor talale was telling about these grants and all they came later but before that being a government institute nobody wants to work after 5 o'clock or less faculty all these problems are there in every government institute but being a self financed no we are private employees so we have, we have to hard work otherwise our jobs will be continued otherwise we are out so that uh, thing is always there but beyond that we were always conducting this training programs in later evening. that's how culture got developed so naturally students got participating in various activities workshops and all we were conducting then uh, automatically government has recognized and all these things came into picture so even today though i am a entrepreneur but i believe more in the skill development that's why i mean applying the idea before applying the idea lab we were doing these things immediately they have recognized oh you are already doing this well and good so i mean we should be thankful to government of india that at national level uh, this thing have started that uh, skills are employable not the degrees otherwise we have ample of institutes were giving the degrees but so need of the uh, work that uh, uh, skills has to be imparted and would like to tell you a brief story about my startup journey uh in the year 2014-15 uh i visited my native place i am from nagpur district katol tahsil and um, my elder brother mr lakshmi kant got suffered uh, due to some uh, diabetics and the uh, kidney failure problems so i took him to government medical college in nagpur and during the visit one of the resident doctor had just took a photo in his mobile and at the same time i asked him what should you do of this image he told me he will show to his uh, head of the dermatology and within one week you will get to know what type of uh, skin disease he may had so at the same time i just this is my first inspiration point that uh, i i thought of uh, i th- i thought of having computer engineering degree and i could not be able to make the mobile applications which will definitely help the people uh, at the rural place to at least get the probability of this skin disease from their mobile itself so you know uh, this is what is the first uh, first instant happened with me which inspired me to have eg to eg means an application which will e- which will be very easy to scan the skin image and get the probability at within a second so that's why uh, i defined the name of uh, my startup that was easy to scan easy to scan the skin that is skin g skin eg that was the first name uh, in this startup uh, i took an help of dr uday khopkar uh, who was uh, head professor and head at uh, skin and vd department at state gs medical college and km hospital so he also joined with me as a co-founder so we had a team of myself and dr uday khopkar we registered uh, my startup in 2018 
and then our journey begins and uh, our journey nicely begins with one of the beautiful product named as dharma lens which is right now available at uh, google play store as well as an apple we did business uh, during pandemic it was very difficult uh, to attract the customers because we received the we received the funding from our existing uh, sptbi nidhi sss uh, 10 lakhs rupees we utilize it for uh, we utilize it for research innovations and product development and uh, we tried our best to get uh, lots of customers on our platform and during those days it was a success story because dr uday khopkar and many doctors need that telemedicine services to be employed and uh, after this there was again one more instance why i keep this uh, journey on that in many rural places if you see there are so many marriage issues which may broken due to just having a skin types yeah, means uh, in hindi mein bolte hai are tum uh, ब्लैक कलर के हो तुम तुम्हारे इसमें विटिलिगो का डाग है व्हाइट कलर का डाग है बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इश्यूज आल्सो मेनी टाइम्स आई सीन इन सोशल इन सोसाइटी लॉट्स ऑफ मैरिज आल्सो गेट्स ब्रोकन अप सो हाउ आई एज ए हाउ एज ए हेल्थ केयर स्टार्टअप आई कैन मेक एन अवेयरनेस ऑफ दिस स्किन इश्यूज एट द ग्लोबल फॉर्म सो डैट यू नो देर आर सो मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ लाइक विटिलिगो इट इज नॉट इन कंटेजियस किसी को अगर सफेद डाग है इसका मतलब उसको स्किन डिसीज है ऐसा नहीं है so there are so many you know misunderstandings are avail- misunderstandings are there which can be which can be filled out one more this is the second uh, you can say an inspiration that i would like to help to the community as well as i would like to help to the rural person who cannot afford the dermatologist fees if you know there are there are um, 1 0.49 percentage of dermatologist available in this 140 crores of population dermatologists are very dear and um, that's why i wish to uh, have this startup this is how this is how i say that the culture which my institute exhibits in the form of having sardar patel technology business incubation and having an e sale and idc type of platforms and and and, you, and and also the innovative mindset at my campus helps me inspires me to have my own startups uh, in spit so my journey of entrepreneurship began when i completed uh, my mtech uh, from iit bombay in uh, 1996 where i joined uh, a tata group of companies in elco as a rmd engineer i worked there for some time but after that i found that uh, if i continue working in the company i may not uh, be able to become an entrepreneur because i had a very strong you know uh, motivation zeal for uh, starting my own because i used to do some consultancy work in nearby industries where i was uh, residing in new bombay and uh, there by looking at those people who are uh, small and medium scale entrepreneur that time in let's say uh, before 2000 uh, uh, then uh, i found that that there there was a big uh, uh, sme zone uh, between uh, uh, that uh, panvel uh, washi to uh, to thane so thane uh, panvel uh, thane belapur uh, you know uh, that industrial zone so in that zone i used to do some uh, you know i used to provide my consultancy services okay out of my uh, iit skills so i started you know uh, thinking that uh, even if i have uh, i am employee somewhere why can't i start my own uh, by myself and there were some products in my mind also that time then uh, uh, but the atmosphere at the industry was not conducive so i you know uh, stepped down to uh, to teaching field then i uh, i got a very good uh, start there in the teaching also because i had a, uh, enough industry experience and uh, iit mtech degree so that time mtech was very uh, prestigious <laughs> so then i started working in teaching field and i had enough leisure hours that time the principal and the administration of the management has supported me and i started one entity called as zoom engineer so through that what i was doing i was just catering to uh, the educational organization where i am selling out the uh, different innovative softwares at that time uh, you know this uh, computer simulation of electronic circuit was a very new area 
So I started working on some exercises and I created one product called as Virtual Electronics Lab. And I sold out to many uh, you know, nearby organizations. Then I started working on some industrial product like uh, induction heating, uh, di dielectric heating, etc. Et and I that time also through that Zoom engineering, along with some one or two um, technicians, uh, I have done that. And my the workplace was my residence only. Then after that, um, I started my one company, which is still working, Inventronics Private Limited. So I registered a company along with my friend. And uh, we used to do consultancy work only through that company. So we thought that let us not stick to one product because product needs a production. And production needs a setup and setup needs a, a lot of investment. Okay. So we we thought that let us do uh, you know small small uh, consultancy work mm -hmm. uh, and identify a product and then only we can go for it and that company is still working uh, it has completed nearly ten years I joined SPIT because here the entrepreneur the atmosphere was was very much conducive okay to the entrepreneurial journey of a teacher faculty now there are two startup in pipeline. Okay. So, number one startup, I'll tell you that um, recently my student, Garshana Sanki, has completed her PhD work. Okay. Okay. And we have, uh, we have converted that idea into a product. Okay. So, we got a Nidhi Prayas grant and we made a laboratory prototype also in the field of telecom uh, uh, power systems. Mm -hmm. Telecom is a very growing field, 5G, 6G. Okay. So, the infrastructure is growing. The, the towers are growing, so the infrastructure needs needs to be fulfilled, right? And we found that there are many multinational players. Mm -hmm. So why can't we do indigenous and very very little cost effective? You know, so you don't have to uh, spend so much. Uh, you don't have to import so much. Uh, you know, semiconductor from other uh, countries. Okay, right. so let us save our. Uh, dollars <laughs> or uh, foreign currency, let's say, yeah. foreign, uh, you know, mm -hmm. exchange. Yes. So, uh, so in that direction, we got a first, uh, you know, breakthrough in uh, successfully completing the laboratory product. The field trials are already completed, but the advanced level trial production would be started. Okay. So this is the first thing. Second thing, um, since uh, 1998, I was working in the field of induction uh, heating system. Okay, that because that was my area of EMTEC. So I have converted that EMTEC project okay, into a product and I was working since 1998, mm -hmm. you can imagine. So recently, for my ideas, you know, Department of Science and Technology has given me, has, you know, given me a sanction for a <coughs> project called as Design and Development of uh, <coughs> uh, Fully Automated Pressure and Vacuum Control Induction Casting Machine. It is worth, uh, uh, DST is giving 60 lakhs, it has given already okay. 60 lakhs and 10 lakhs is industry support. So we have, you know, introduced an industry there, industry is also ready to take this product and we are working together and it will be one more startup which is in the pipeline. Okay, so this is my small uh, startup journey. So here are a few things which we can understand. One is... Uh, in academics, we need a culture of innovation in place. Second, the top to down support, which is required to build that culture of innovation. Uh, third part, which many of you highlighted is the industry connect. There should be a need and the academics should be able to match that need. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so I think these are the three takeaways from this one. Let's move on to the next question. And, uh, you know, uh, an entrepreneur faces a lot of challenges in his or her journey. So, could you highlight what were the challenges which you faced and how did you overcome? First thing I noticed is that corporate people, uh, uh, they don't accept what we say, right? Uh, we, in academics, what happens, whatever I know is the syllabus. <laughs> like, but in corporate, they give the syllabus and you should train them. So, that means uh, just to train one day, you have to literally prepare one month. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of preparation because see, when they are outsourcing some work, that means imagine that means their employees are unable to do it. That's why they are outsourcing. So that means you have to put those many hours. 
But then during that time, I observed that, uh, uh, particularly in IIT also, our, uh, my supervisor was Dr. Mukul Chandodkar. He was, uh, no, uh, he worked in USA, Germ uh, Switzerland, and he came back to, then he started developing the boats. I was wondering, he's in, having a lot of funds, he can buy Xilinx, uh, Texas, these boats, he can buy and use it. They can afford, uh, they have a huge amount of funds. But no, he started designing the boards on his own, including DSPs, FPGs, you know, the, the boards which are used for the students. And uh, his uh, uh, wish is that every student should have a one board. It's not a laboratory that uh, labs happens because being a residential campus, labs happens at the hostels, right? So the assignment should be in such a way that uh, one assignment should take at least one week to complete not in one or two hours. Right. So that is the kind of, uh, I, mean, uh, uh, I mean, the problem statements he used to give. But then you have to provide the resources also. Every student should have a board. But if you buy a board, like Dr. Savant is saying that if you buy one board, it will cost you not less than 50,000 rupees those days. Mm -hmm. It's not possible to provide uh, one or two boards we can buy, but uh, we cannot provide every board. But then because of the popularity of the professors, entire IIT students used to take his elective power electronics including uh, computer science students. So then he started, no, let us buy the ICs, but board should be our own, number one. Number two, see, if you buy a Xilinx or any other boards, they are IDs, they are not meant for education. They are not meant for no, doing our own practical, the way we design, because being a autonomous, they design their own mm -hmm. curriculum. That's not meant for that. So that's how he started designing kernel boards and all. So mm -hmm. that since being a, uh, no, is a research assistant. I helped him, and I learned these uh, that education badly requires the, this kind of a self-designed systems. So that is somehow you can say. I mean, uh, uh, the beginning stage for me that uh, as an entrepreneur that uh, we should develop the boards for educational purpose, looking at uh, the IIT Bombay model. Then when I finished my PhD, then I started developing the board for other institutes. That was my first thing. See, the biggest problem in academics is you know. Uh, unfortunately, the mindset of the students, you know, particularly, why anybody will work for extra hours? If I am getting a degree or I am getting a pass marks, uh, the our subjects are meant for getting scores or marks that uh, not beyond that skills and all. Nobody cares. And every parent also say the same thing, right? Yes, I'm sure the entrepreneur can do yes, okay, job. Karna. That is the thing. So it's a difficult phase as a professor also, though if I say skills, if I say I mean, help me now in designing it because as a lone professor, it's difficult to all these things. You require a team. The biggest challenge is marketing. Biggest challenge is reaching out to the customer. Biggest challenge is taking the product from the laboratory to the market. Developing, possible. Inventing, invention, possible. But taking to the market is a big challenge. We need to find the best team for this. All young people, they are aware about this. All startup founders, they are aware about this. And that's why when they make a team, one will totally handle the marketing part, other will handle the operation part, one will handle the technology development part, they don't interfere in each, everybody's business. I uh, just want to add one more thing, that uh, faculties should be encouraged on the campus, okay? And the faculties, uh, the, the teachers also should take along the students, you know, in their entrepreneurship journey, involve them, make them founder, so that the management would not have, you know, uh, zero down policy towards you or the negative, uh, you know, uh, inclination uh, towards you. I feel that there is one, uh, this is the only solution which uh, we can, we can take students along with us. You know, the students are very dynamic. Mm -hmm. They are vibrant. And they, you know, they run here and there, collect the information and this type of, you know, culture is required. Uh, uh, simply uh, uh, implementing something, okay, may not fetch you the success. Simply uh, getting the market, uh, let's say I have only market, but my product is not so good to stand in the market. Okay. So for that, you also require a very cutting edge technology. Okay. Yeah. And also you should have a teamwork. Marketing is a big challenge. Uh, being a teacher, being a teacher, yeah, it's very simple to uh, learn and apply the technology and build the technology solution. But how to sell it? How to make the commerce from it? 
and engineering students you yeah, are rightly said that they will not work with you as a marketing executive you need to find the alternative solutions so i took in so i took uh, means uh, take the help of digital marketing from nearby our bhavans college students and they work but still marketing is a big challenge every startup is facing it's simple to build and create but very difficult to sell it out because you know in the market what you see what you get jo dikhta hai wahi bikta hai this is what actually you should be little professional apart from this being a teacher we always tried our best to provide those training as well as uh, learning and the research internships to my students before before having my startups i we i started this risk providing research internship journey in the respective domain since from 2014 till date more than 300 students uh, i provided an internships and currently also we are i am providing so this is the first challenge that is in marketing the second challenge which uh, i learned is that acceptability of this artificial intelligence in medical domain today still corona corona had learned corona corona had give this uh, you know learning to lots many doctors across the across the nation and the globe also that without this telemedicine they cannot reach out to the respective patients but still if whenever there is a word artificial intelligence ai for healthcare or ai based uh, operations or or ai based predictions still there is in fear i don't know when this fear is going to be removed people should trust the technology today we are the human being who design this ai who build this algorithms and this is for the benefits and for the humanity the third challenge which i am facing is that the wherever in schools education normally there are healthcare health checkup that is you can say medical camp lagta hai सब मेडिकल कार्ड्स में आप देखो आपको ये है क्या आपको वो है क्या बट एक भी कार्ड में मैंने ये नहीं देखा कि आपको कोई स्किन इश्यू है क्या तो आप आज अगर आप स्कूल में जाओगे या कोई भी कहीं भी जाओगे मेडिकल कैंप में आपका हार्ट बीट चेक होता है आपका शुगर चेक होता है आपका मीन्स एवरीथिंग ऑक्सीजन लेवल्स एंड सो मेनी थिंग्स गेटिंग चेक बट कहीं भी मैंने देखा नहीं कि आप को, आपको कोई स्किन का प्रॉब्लम है क्या so this is also one of the gap which i am facing being a startup working in skin domain specially and i know that if this particular criteria gets included might be my application which is right now available which will be largely helpful to the rural places in the large domain so from this we can understand that uh, majorly entrepreneurship in academia is about technology and how we can connect with marketing so building a great product and then building a great team to market i think we can take those lessons from apple also when he had the vice president of coca cola steve jobs to market its product even he was a great engineer at the back end but then he required the best of the marketing people to create the apple the way we see today uh one of the other things which i <clears throat> i would like to add to what savan sir mentioned about the use of students In fact, uh, I visited a lot of colleges. Uh, I have been interacting with students across, uh, you know, demographies, and there are exchange programs also. So when the students go abroad for these exchange program, they can be a good tool to understand do a market survey. Why can't we also give them a research task when they go for six months of exchange? Understand the demography over there. What kind of Indian products are being sold? What are the needs? What are the gaps? Can they come back and you know tell us? Uh, at the institutions that these are the indian products i could see and these are the gaps which uh, you know could help us bridge it because then we can you know understand what are the new uh, you know emerging markets as well and the students will get a perspective of how research has to be you know conducted let's move to the next part of it um uh, we know there are uh, 15000 plus institutions you know affiliated to aict and uh, there are so many activities you know being run and many of you which already have mentioned in our previous discussion could you like to highlight one or two aspects of ministry of education's innovation cell uh, or uh, you know the aict which has helped you in some or the other way first thing uh, let me appreciate the efforts taken by aict over the decades aict was totally involved in technology promotion technology invention but the recent years uh, aict is promoting this entrepreneurship so it's a best combination of technology and entrepreneurship of course only entrepreneurship means a trading business that is 
not uh, that is not for the engineering institute technology entrepreneurship this nisp policy is a perfect policy in fact more awareness of that policy is required i have taken many sessions on this policy uh, that is also good thing and you said about innovation ministry of innovation yes what are the scheme they are coming out what are the plan they are coming out is really inspiring what is happening with that is a lot of entrepreneurship culture is created in the campus earlier people used to talk about only entrepreneurship related to the food products entrepreneurship related to note selling entrepreneurship related to the stationery related items now people have started talking about product development this uh, government's lab idea lab prayas lab this is a concept actually implementing and executing the technology entrepreneurship stream now what is happening every student cannot become an entrepreneur but every student is an innovator can be an innovator every student can make something viable product so we always tell them that in this entire journey the first step is the technology invention second step is ipr creation third is the commercialization now commercialization there are two aspect one is product develop uh, startup incubation and second is commercialization selling the find out msme can take something so these are the areas where government is supporting lot government is supporting for ipr registration government is supporting for technology incubation government is supporting for funding support so all these things has come on because of government initiative if anything it becomes a regulation government then most of the institutes see as a as if a documentation process so one more rule has come up now let me create some evidences and document file it and i am done this is the unfortunate state of education particularly education institutes because education means just a degree of, as as like i said like they have become like a degree awarding institute they are not looking as a you know, what the candidate will do after because they have they joined education with lot of expectations that you know they will do something in their career From industry point of view we see the three generations first generation 1970s like narayan murthy or prem ji and you know or uh, that uh, raju from uh, satyam computer they were the people self motivated they have started the entrepreneurship they, i mean it revolution they have brought in this country after that like professor talale has mentioned our own passed out students right and uh, 2000 passed out like rahul chari and all. they have somehow motivated in us came back started the company that's how this phone pay and all work india and all came into picture mm-hmm. now we are the third generation where students are there fortunately because let me appreciate iit and all these people at least some good institute i'm not saying everywhere some good institutes have brought these things as a part of academics mm-hmm. Right. Professor Talale used to teach entrepreneurship and all. Like you know, the earlier uh, ACT chairman is also say that first let us target mass. Right. Thoda uh, large scale me karte everywhere. Tha ki usme se sau me se ho sakta hai ki ek das log do log to entrepreneurship ke baare me sochein. So I really appreciate. Let us do that as a part of academics. At least few courses, few credit courses. If you do it about this finance economics. Like NEP is also saying that you no, know, it's not just engineering, not just computer. It's all about the overall development. Hopefully, the next generation, you know, at least some good institutes, this our culture will be adopted. Few more entrepreneurs will become. I really appreciate the support from AICT to boost up this startup culture as well as uh, helping in today's uh, economic growth of India. It's really appreciated. because uh, the introduction of this startup policy in the form of nisp then introduction of institute innovation council then atal ranking and then cii you know all these schemes at least some awareness has been reach out to certain masses but there is a need there is a necessity that this connect can be improved now it is there you can observe the awareness of this startup policies awareness of various types of funding schema because it's very important in entrepreneurship that what are those financial resources from where these startup founders will reach out to get those funding so awareness is very important so i think uh, the more connect is needed at the rural places because you know ideas we come from any place okay. so uh, this is my humble request that uh, the connect need to be connect need to be improved and the awareness of various types of startup policies nisps policies the pros and cons the advantage and the disadvantage 
these these are the things the not only not only for the faculties but even for the today's generation who had various really really innovative ideas in their mind and they would like to grow the beneficent the benef the benefits need to be benefits need to be explained them and this is how i think that ai city uh, and different government bodies can definitely help today's institutes at rural as well as the urban places to grow the ai city has got uh, some four five programs uh, related to entrepreneurship uh, which i feel are very nice so i think uh, that innovation sale uh, for each college right so i think uh, this uh, ai city idea lab is also giving lot of uh, incentive to the so students in using the infrastructure <coughs> created in the under the ai city idea lab Right. especially those people who are product oriented entrepreneur okay not the service oriented product oriented entrepreneur who want to create some products a physical product this ai city idea lab infrastructure has helped a lot okay uh, so that has definitely boosted the uh, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship in the uh, campus uh now we'll move on to the next question uh, and we know that innovation is kind of a ripple effect you know one innovation creates a lot of opportunities uh, it also not only motivates others to dive in to create something similar but uh, it helps uh, many beneficiaries in overcoming those challenges you know and uh, we as human beings have come long way from innovating the you know a wheel and today the way things are shaping up so uh, what do you see you know as a faculty entrepreneurs how the students uh, you know see you and what kind of impact do you think uh, you have on the minds of the students we as a faculty member give the direction to the students to think differently uh, for example when they come with the project it's not that that uh, we have to just do what everybody has done or uh, just do to do the get the result but we have to continuously think of adding something which is an extra incremental innovation we call it if somebody has developed at least if you take my example i said that first look at what is already there in the market get that here and just explain me that product and do some incremental innovation if i tell anything the students they develop the things or they come with the solution within 15 to 20 minutes of time and i get shocked now i know that the underlying philosophy is they use chat gpt <laughs> it's not that they don't want to do it but they want to use the available in this technology is. they require trigger to think differently and it's happening incremental innovation is happening in academic campus 100% innovation is challenge it's not always possible and there cannot be built overnight we need lot of time into that we need to understand the market feel we need to understand innovation we need to understand the research trend and then only anything is possible disruption tech innovation is possible disruption innovation if anything is available let's do it in a different way ola is the best example of disruption innovation uber is the another example uh, this uh, there are multiple examples where the process was available but now it is the same thing is the service is available in different way we have trigger this latest students force to think differently and the products are not products but the invention is coming out and at least in our academic campus we have filed and published more than 100 patents perceptions yeah definitely uh, it impacts on their mindset they look at uh, they look at uh, they look at us uh, about our startups they want to know what how you have started what are those technologies which you are using they would like to take participation as a interns as a research interns for two months one and a half months they would like to work after college timings which i observed in last you can say 6 to 7 years they took participation with me in not only in development but in marketing in analysis video making pitching at outside going somewhere for competitions so you know the learning curve exponential learning exponential learning is observed and i found the benefits uh, to these uh, learners is really they the this professional experience add value to their ongoing project works it add value to their uh, it add value to their day to day day to day you know learning and they took 
they, they took the uh, learning from us. They normally students when they are joined in my team, they normally got an access to various resources like AWS, which they cannot. They got an access to various developer accounts also. They, 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 they do they do not they do not take it immediately because it uh, it needs some money. So they add they keep on adding those value added components during their graduations. Yeah, we are uh, and you know many times it happens. Uh, we took the students for six month internships. We uh, I took students for two months internships. I do you an offer to them. Yeah, it's not free of course. I do pay back uh, the stipend so that they can at least uh, their travel expenses and some food cost is there. So perception of students looking at the looking at this faculty entrepreneurs, I found uh, drastic change in today's and today's yes definitely. Uh, it may be you can say the takeaway message for so many faculties at the respective institutes to have the daring to have your own startup in your institute and AICT support will definitely help you to build those uh, uh, eco culture in your institutes through which your students will definitely learn that professionalism and definitely it will be a good asset to the society. I mean, whenever we are guide, guiding our research scholars, we are saying that is there any possibility of converting your uh, research into a product. That's what we look for. That is the only way a faculty can, uh, of course, is also a student uh, the other way around, but very rarely students are joining in research. Generally, faculty are joining in the research. But in IITs, yeah, students do join in research program. That is a, another possibility. My appeal and also I think somewhere I read NAC is also recognized saying that Instead of doing the publications, we have done tons of publications and who is betting the, I mean, uh, getting the <laughs> advantage of just by publication. Publication means just somebody will convert your idea into product and you don't get nothing in return. That's what unfortunately happening last 30 years. We are unnecessarily publishing at international conferences and journal and some other countries are converting our ideas into products. Instead of that, at your own institute or even universities, government of India should state that stop doing publications. Even if you do patent, right? I mean, that's done. Some of the IITs are doing, but we still, that mindset is not gone, even universities. They still say that, do you have a journal, impact factor, so why do you want all these things? Once he has done an Indian patent or an international patent, you should be awarded a degree, number one. Number two, product development is not just because of, you know, software. Product consists of multidisciplinary area of expertise, right? You should have other disciplines also. Some of the IITs have started doing this, right? Not necessary, for example, if you're a computer science student. Not necessary that your project also has to have a software in it. Okay. Even if you go to rural area and if you do some social sort of a thing, you do it, I am okay as long as your research has contributed to that. So if at all, if you want to encourage the student's entrepreneurship, first you bring that into the system. Saying that I am okay with the patents, I am okay with, even if it's not a software, if you do some sort of a, this thing, I am okay with. That is, can motivate. Faculty members can act as a facilitator. Even if they, they, they are doing the same thing, it's more than enough. Okay. So our societal objective would be fulfilled. There are a few examples, only few examples, where uh, faculties have successfully launched their entrepreneur uh, uh, unit uh, becomes successful might be very few examples okay but they can become a motivator because you know the the very first uh, you know example which people have in front of them the teacher right. so uh, students always try to imitate good teachers hmm. so if any teacher having a strong burning desire for entrepreneurship or some innovation okay so student would remember such type of personality okay and they try to imitate okay so i think that the impact on the students of the faculty would be there only if the faculties are showing incre increasingly okay innovative spirits they carry innovative spirit okay they they, uh, you know, they have research attitude, okay. They also inculcate some kind of facilitating environment. So, the next question uh, is, uh, what are your future plans uh, for your uh, startup? Uh, if, uh, you know, a couple of you could uh, address those. So, the entire future is all about the manufacturing sector. 
so there is a tremendous scope another uh, we can see clearly coming 5 to 10 years of time the kind of demand for the manufacturing sector product manufacturing sector so there is a lot of scope is there now i mean we are on the verge of uh, retirement hopefully now we'll have a full time i feel like again a re reborn no <laughs> say that another few more years with full enthusiastic energetically i could shape my product and penetrate into the market particularly educating the institutions and the students that what is the importance of the product manufacturing my future plan is to increase the collaboration with the government agencies as well as the private firms so that i can grow my business since i am into this uh, skin disease prediction and then uh, recommendation of the products as well as uh, recognizing the cosmetic issues like visual markers and so many things so uh, since uh, i am i sh- i am damn sure that the a- the ai the api which we had built has a good acceptable accuracy to the dermatologist in the market and uh, i am really looking for collaboration with the government as well as the private industries to grow my business this is what is my future plan sir so uh, we'll take the next question sir so i'll start with the first one uh, one book you would like to recommend uh, you know viewers wings of fire uh, by dr kala by dr abdul kalam one should read bhagavad gita usme ek hai एक ब्यूटीफुल वर्ड है आई स्टिल रिमेंबर लास्ट 20 25 इयर्स पहले कर्म करो फलित रिजल्ट्स मत देखो पहले अपना जो करना है वो करो रिजल्ट्स आएंगे अपने आप आई वुड एडवाइस रीड द एंटायर स्टोरी ऑफ छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज इट्स वेरी इंस्पायरिंग वेरी एंटरप्रेन्योरियल एंड हाउ ही हैज ओवरकम द प्रॉब्लम दैट ही हैज फेस रीडिंग अबाउट द वेरियस आर्टिकल्स टू अब्दुल कलाम जी व्हिच इज क्वाइट इंस्पिरेबल टू ऑलमोस्ट ऑल टीचर्स एज वेल एज स्टूडेंट्स टू understand so uh, what is your favorite innovation of all time i know we have you know surrounded by innovation but one innovation which you think really you know stands out which you know humans have created the internet is the biggest innovation innovation every innovation has a two sides one good thing but uh, unfortunately most of the things used for the bad thing i started quoting co- uh, from the nuclear science to till today's mobile and internet uh, every innovation is a, with a good intention people do that but then we also need to uh, think of that what is its future repercussions in the society in the entire world that we have to see internet which has changed and impacted every human being and second which has inspired myself is the google map So uh what is your personal mantra the one quote which keeps you motivated it is something like this innovation creates quality quality creates demand demand creates business growth and business growth leads to the national development change is imminent one should believe that in all aspects do not keep anything spending do value the time if you value the time value will return back the double value to you make innovation as part of your dna second those who want to do the business dhanda dimag se karo dosti dil se karo to close this session one last question to all the participants uh, what is your message uh, what you would like to convey to the students and educators across india about the role of uh, education and innovation in shaping our country's future it is our time right uh, uh, 70s has gone to uh, japanese then koreans then chinese it is our time now the whole world is looking at us and we are largely populated com- country and average uh, uh, age is around 27 30 and we have achieved a lot in education all these things but it is our time so believe in yourself mm-hmm. right 200 years has gone under british and all that british mindset now at least forget about it 75 years we are still in that same mindset now national education policy is saying that now it is our time right echo personality overall development and believe yourself look at 400 years back what we were believe in yourself we will be again back vasudeva kutumbakam go global
respecting the boundaries respecting the limits limitations come and join this startup journey wherever you are and help to the economic growth of our nation which is much needed today i would uh, appeal uh, all the people who are really wants to uh, become entrepreneur so they must have a strong you know desire uh, burning fire so at our ministry of education innovation cell we say jai kisan jai vigyan jai anusandhan and with that i would like to thank all our participants thank for their sir. insightful contributions as we conclude it's clear that the initiatives and efforts of our educators and entrepreneurs are not just shaping the present but are laying the foundation for a developed and self reliant india by 2047 the stories and insights shared today reaffirm our collective vision for viksit bharat driven by empowered academic institutions and innovative minds thank you all for our participants for their inspiring contributions to our audience for joining us into the celebration of innovation and education together we are building a brighter future for our nation jai hind